This is the magnificent University of Aberdeen, founded in 1495, which makes it the third oldest of Scotland's universities. Elphinstone, the Bishop of Aberdeen, petitioned the Pope for a King's College for King James IV of Scotland. Nowadays, the Elphinstone Institute researches and promotes the culture of North and Northeast Scotland. Across my journey, I've seen a resurgence of interest in Scottish culture and identity. To talk about the languages of Scotland, I'm meeting Iona Fife. Iona, what an enormous pleasure. Hello. She's one of Scotland's finest young ballad singers. Iona, forgive me, very ignorant question, but lots of people outside Scotland don't know. What are the national languages of Scotland? Well, we have three national languages, or leads. Lead is the Scots for language. Um, we have Gaelic, which um, is a, a Celtic language, quite similar to Irish Gaelic. And then we have English, of course. But we have the third national lead that the folk half times don't kind that they're actually speaking. It's Scots. Now, Scots takes into consideration all the different dialects. So Orkney, Shetland, Doric, the Northeast dialect, um, Ayrshire Scots, the language of Ravi Burns. <laughs> um, but Scots, unfortunately, is not actually recognised as a legal lawful language in Scotland. Despite, you know, you can read Harry Potter in Scots, you can read Peppa Pig in Scots, you can listen to music in Scots, you can, you know, watch films like Trainspotting where they're speaking in Scots. Um, so what I do is I try to get Scots recognised as a language. Spotify now recognises it as a language, which is quite exciting. Um, but yeah, it's, it's one of three national languages, spoken by 1.5 million people. There's different dialects, but in the northeast here, we have the vernacular or Doric. When you were growing up, what language or languages did you speak? So when I was in the home with my mum and my dad, or my mother and father, we were speaking Doric. And then in the playground at school, we were speaking Doric. But then in the classroom, where would I tell to speak properly? What's properly? Um, and I think that's a big shame because there's a huge issue with Scots and class stigmatism. Folk think that if you're speaking Scots, you're uneducated, you're uncouth, you're no speaking proper English. Um, a lot of folk think it's slang when, you know, it's, it is a real language with a real dictionary. In speaking to me just now, have you been speaking Scots or have you been aiming off for my benefit? But the day I've been giving you a wee bit of a hybrid, uh, instead of giving you like full bore Scots Doric, I've been giving you a wee bit of Scotch English. At one end of the scale, you've got folk that will speak English with a Scots accent. Then at the other end of the scale, you've got folk that are just speaking Scots all the time. And in between that, you've got folk that are going to be code switching, wee bits of both. You're quite drawn to ballads, I think. Tell me about ballads. Yeah, so I did a degree in Scots song, in traditional music at the Royal Conservatoire of Scotland. And part of Scots song is ballads, bothy ballads and traditional ballads. So in the North East, we had these things cried bothy ballads, which were sung primarily by farm workers. And it would be about, you know, life on the farm, love, courtship on the farm. And then there's another type of ballad called the traditional ballad or the muckle sang. And these traditional ballads, you know, were often about historic events or battles or honour killings or unrequited love or something. You rather took me back just there. You mentioned honour killing? Yes. Um, there's a ballad. It's about an honour killing that happened in Fivey, which is very close to where I grew up in Huntley. And a woman named Agnes Smith was murdered by her family for falling in love with the wrong lad. They wanted her to marry Lord Fivey and she fell in love with a man named Andrew Lamy, who was a servant to Lord Fivey. Now, this is a true story, and I think that's why it resonates with traditional singers, and it dates back to 1673. Here in the cloisters of King's College, Iona will sing the ballad known as The Mill of Tifty Zanny. At Mill o Tifty, there be a man in the neighbourhood of Fivey, he had a bonny daughter fair, and her name was Bonnie Annie. Her skin was like a spring in flour that greets the rosy morning. Her innocence and graceful mien her beauty's face adorning. 
Then her feather bet her wondrous sore, and also did her mother. Her sisters also took their score, but we beat her breather, for her breather bet her wondrous sore. We curl strokes and mahani, and he broke her back across a stain. All for loving and me. That was wonderful, but my goodness, what a bitter and sorrowful tale. So the poor woman is beaten by her father, her mother, her sisters. Her back is broken by her brother, all for loving a man that her father didn't approve of. A wonderful song, well done. Thank you.